Hey sailors, welcome to another Cruise Report Cruise Review. Today we're going to talk about our recent cruise aboard Viking Polaris. We were on one of the two Viking expedition ships for 12 nights doing a kind of a Canadian Great Lakes cruise. So if you're interested in Viking or if you think you might be interested in Viking or if you think you might be interested in an expedition cruise, I think you're going to want to watch this. So we just got back from 12 nights aboard Viking Polaris. This was our 141st cruise, and it was our 12th cruise with Viking Cruises. I think we've done seven river cruises and maybe four ocean cruises, and then this was our first Viking expedition ship. These are uh, two ships, Viking Polaris, Viking Octantis. Viking Polaris is the newer of the two ships. I'm just giving you a little bit of our background first. First of all, I want you to know right up front, we're not travel agents. We don't sell cruises, so we stand nothing to gain. Uh, if you book a Viking cruise or don't book a Viking cruise, Viking did not pay us to make this video. However, Viking did invite us uh, as part of a media group, a group of media people, journalists that were on board the ship on this sailing. Now, there were regular passengers on the sailing, too. I think there were maybe, just guessing, seven to ten journalists on board. I'm going to try to do this entire ship review, dining, stateroom, everything in one video, as opposed to some cruise ships where I'll split it up into two or three videos. First, I want to talk about just the ship in general. Viking Polaris is one of two identical expedition ships currently in the Viking Cruises fleet, the other being Viking Octantis. Viking Polaris is a Polar Class 6 vessel built in 2022 making her the newest Viking expedition ship. These ships can carry up to 378 guests with a crew complement of 256. The ships share the distinctive Viking Cruises DNA that you'll find in the Viking Ocean ships. The furnishings, carpeting, artwork, and other design elements are going to look very familiar to anyone who has sailed on other Viking Cruises vessels. Viking Polaris is not just a smaller version of a Viking Ocean ship, however. This ship has been purpose-built to sail the waters of Antarctica and the Great Lakes. And with a beam of only 77 feet, she'll just barely fit through the locks of the Great Lakes, as we experienced several times during our 12-night cruise. In fact, the clearance is so tight, after transiting the locks, the sides of the hull have to be touched up with paint to cover up the scars left by the locks. The public areas of Viking Polaris closely resemble those of the larger Viking Ocean ships, but the layout is quite different and takes a little getting used to. It took us a couple of days to learn our way around this ship. Deck 6 is the topmost deck and is where you're going to find open deck space with lots of comfortable seating. You'll also find a small smoking area here. Forward on Deck 6 is where you'll find the Owner's Suite and the Explorer's Suites. Forward on Deck 5, you'll find the upper level of the Explorer's Lounge. The Library and the Living Room. The Living Room has its own bar and seating that extends down the starboard side of the ship. Daily trivia is held in the Living Room, and you can find some evening musical entertainment here as well. Just aft of the Living Room on Deck 5, port side, you'll find Mamsen's, a small dining venue offering Norwegian specialties for breakfast, lunch, and in the afternoons. 
Most of Deck 5, however, is home to World Cafe, the ship's buffet-style restaurant, and the primary dining venue on board Viking Polaris. And we'll talk more about World Cafe in the food and dining section of this video. Aft on Deck 5 is Aqua V Terrace, with its own bar and small pools. Even with the moderate weather on our cruise, we never saw anyone use any of the pools here. There is a promenade deck that surrounds most of Deck 5, but to completely circumnavigate the ship, you have to walk down some stairs forward on Deck 4, and then back up to Deck 5. Forward on Deck 4 is the lower level of Explorer's Lounge, which is where you'll find the Paps Bar. The rest of Deck 4 is for staterooms and a laundrette for guest use. Most of Deck 3 is occupied by staterooms and also has a laundrette. All the way forward on Deck 3, you'll find the shelter, an outdoor space semi-protected from the elements that leads out to the bow. The bow is a gathering place for the ultimate in sightseeing and whale watching experiences. When the cold wind or rain becomes too much to handle, guests can walk back into the shelter to get warm and dry without having to leave the outer deck. It really is a genius design for Antarctica. Midship on Deck 3 is the location of the small Nordic shop, selling primarily cold weather clothing and accessories. Aft on Deck 3 is the upper level of the Ala, the ship's theater venue. On Deck 2 forward, you'll find more staterooms and Expedition Central, where guests can ask the expedition team members questions about ongoing onboard scientific projects. There are many interesting exhibits here, including an ongoing list of all the wildlife that has been spotted during the cruise. Walking aft on Deck 2, you'll find the Nordic Spa, Fitness Center, and Salon. The Nordic Spa will be familiar to anyone who has sailed on the larger ocean vessels. But unlike the ocean ship, Viking Polaris features a thermal suite with an amazing view of the ocean. The spa has a large thalassotherapy pool, large steam room, sauna, and an experienced shower. The spa is much larger and nicer than you would ever expect to find on a ship this size. Aft on Deck 2, you'll find the Ala Main Level, and I have to say this is one of the nicest theaters we've seen on any ship. The Ala is where daily briefings and lectures are held. The venue has very comfortable seating and 180-degree views of the ocean. An electronically controlled screen can be lowered for presentations. Behind the Ala, all the way aft on Deck 2, is the Fence Terrace, with comfortable seating and wraparound views of the ocean. This is another great location for sightseeing and whale spotting. Forward on Deck 1 is the Hyde, a very remote and interesting lounge venue where you can find peace and quiet on most days. Midship on Deck 1 is Guest Services, Manfredi's Italian Restaurant, and The Restaurant. Sandwiched in between Manfredi's and The Restaurant is a private dining room. This private dining room can be served by either the restaurant menu or Manfredi's menu. We had dinner with a group of 10 in the private dining room one evening, 
and found that it revealed the only glaring design flaw we could find on the entire ship. The acoustics in the room were so bad, the noise levels from normal conversations were almost unbearable. Aft on deck one is the hangar and the science lab. And the hangar is where the ship stores all of the watercraft used for expeditions, including Zodiacs, two special operation boats, or SOBs, and two submarines, along with several kayaks. The science lab is the place where chief scientist Dr. Brandy Revels onboard team of scientists test all types of climate-related data collected during the voyage, and guests are encouraged to help with the ongoing experiments. The lowest deck is Deck A, which is used for embarkation, boarding the tenders, the Zodiacs, the special operations boats, and there's also a medical center. As for our impressions of Viking Polaris, we love the size of the ship and consider it to be perfectly suited as an expedition ship. Of the 10 expedition ships on which we have sailed, this is the one expedition ship we would most like to sail on again, and it would be our first choice for an Antarctica cruise. The ship is small enough to be easy to navigate, but large enough to have all of the amenities that you could expect. However, while the furnishings in the public spaces are beautiful, using only the highest quality materials with that Scandinavian design theme that we love, we actually found most all of the seating to be uncomfortable and heard other guests remark about this also. The ship is probably the most solidly constructed ship on which we've ever sailed. Even in moderately rough seas, the ship remained rock solid with a smooth and quiet ride. We only noticed a little rolling motion one day and never felt any pitching motion. We also really do appreciate that if you miss a lecture or a presentation in the Ala, Viking makes them available on your stateroom television on demand. The ship is flawlessly maintained and is spotlessly clean. I never went into a public restroom where it did not look as though it had just been serviced. There were 336 guests on our sailing, and the ship never felt the least bit crowded. And even with an additional 42 guests at capacity, I doubt the ship would have felt crowded. We never had to stand in line for anything. We also felt like the ship was adequately staffed. We never had to wait too long to place a drink order in any of the bars or in the World Cafe. The only small exception might be if you're seated on the upper level of Explorer's Lounge, which is served by Paps Bar on Deck 4 below. We really only had two concerns that stood out over our 12 days aboard Viking Polaris. Even though we informed the ship ahead of time that we would be celebrating an anniversary at the restaurant one evening, no mention of it was ever made by anyone. The second issue, and probably more important, was the lack of Crown Royal in the bars. Now, I only drink Crown Royal, and even though it does appear on the Viking menus, I was informed that it was not available on the ship. Had I known this ahead of time, I most likely would not have paid extra for the Silver Spirits drink package, which Viking charges a rate of $25 per day per person. Now that's actually a fair price for an unlimited drink package, but it's not worth it to me since they did not have my favorite drink. Now the issue with our anniversary and the lack of Crown Royal are really more disappointments than complaints. Honestly, it's very difficult to find fault with our overall experience on Viking Polaris. We left Viking Polaris with our expectations having been met or exceeded, and we have pretty high expectations. Now let's talk about some of the activities and entertainment available on Viking Polaris. Keep in mind that Viking Polaris is an expedition ship, 
purpose-built for exploration in remote areas that other ships can't reach. Guests cruising on an expedition ship would be expected to spend lots of time off of the ship actively exploring whatever the current destination has to offer. Think of Antarctica, for example. And even though there are no icebergs or penguins to visit when she's cruising the Great Lakes, Polaris offers its guests a variety of activities both on and off the ship. There are shore excursions led by local guides. Now, some of these excursions, generally the walking tours or motor coach tours, take in the highlights of the port and many are included in the price of the cruise. There are also some optional excursions that you can purchase. These tend to be longer in duration, visit more sites, and sometimes even include a meal. If getting off the ship and walking into a port town is not an option, Viking provides a complimentary shuttle bus whenever possible. And this makes it easy to go into town on your own and explore, which we really enjoy doing. This is a great perk that not many cruise lines offer. Now, because she's an expedition ship, Viking Polaris is outfitted with Zodiacs, kayaks, two special operation boats, and wait for it, two submarines. That means you'll have the chance to sign up for a Zodiac excursion or special operations boat ride that departs from Deck A to cruise along the shoreline, take in the scenery and look for wildlife. You can join a group of fellow guests for a few hours of kayak paddling. Now, if you're lucky enough to have ideal conditions and if the local laws allow it, a submarine ride might be available. The sub holds up to six guests and the ride is at an additional cost. If you don't want to go outside, there are things to do on the ship. Trivia is held most every afternoon in the library. Jigsaw puzzles are available throughout the ship where guests can work on putting them together. Board games are available and there are a few tables in the lounges that have electronic games built into the tabletop. You could visit the well-stocked library that contains books on a variety of subjects such as exploration, adventure, wildlife, geography. As a matter of fact, there are a lot of books placed on bookshelves throughout the ship for guests just to pick up and enjoy. There are even some books about exploration placed in each stateroom. And if you appreciate art, you can use the Viking Voyager app that you download on your phone before you boarded to take a narrated and self-guided walking tour to explore the onboard art. If you ever had any doubts that you were on an expedition ship, the Polaris's artwork will certainly convince you otherwise. You can visit the laboratory on Deck 1, where there's usually a member of the onboard Viking Polaris science team who'll be delighted to show you around and answer any questions about current ongoing research projects. Guests are invited and encouraged to provide hands-on help with some of the research projects in progress. If you have questions about exploration or wildlife, go to Expedition Central located on Deck 2, where members of the expedition team can be found throughout the day, ready to talk nature, geography, geology, weather, the oceans, or anything else you might want to talk about. There are also lots of exhibits on display here that are worth your time to look them over. Enrichment lectures are scheduled just about every day in the Aula Theater. Some events held in the Aula, such as the Daily Briefing, are also live-streamed to your stateroom television. And speaking of television, if you like to watch TV in your stateroom, you'll find extensive programming available, including free movies. At various times throughout the day and evening, you can enjoy live musical entertainment in the living room and in Explorer's Lounge. You could get in a workout at the nicely equipped fitness center on Deck 2. You could spoil yourself with a variety of massages and facials in the Nordic Spa on Deck 2. Of course, you could use the thermal suite of the Nordic Spa, taking advantage of the steam room, sauna, therapy pool, and other unique features such as the snow grotto. You could choose to relax in the beautiful public areas, chat with new friends, or just watch the scenery go by. As is true with all Viking ships, there is no casino on board Viking Polaris and no elaborate production shows in the evenings. We heard someone remark, Viking is a thinker's cruise, not a drinker's cruise. 
and we tend to agree. So let's talk about our stateroom. We were in what's called, I, be, I believe it's their standard balcony stateroom. I'm not exactly sure what the name of it is. I'll put it on the screen. I'll look it up, put it on the screen for you so you know. First thing I've got to mention right up front, our stateroom attendants were absolutely amazing. Burhan and Lau did an excellent job, kept the room spotless. Viking still does the two services per day, which I love. I like having that turn down service where they come in and clean the room in the evenings and, you know, make sure everything's set up for the next day. A lot of cruise lines are getting rid of that. When you think of luxury, uh, you think of turn down service or two services per day. Let me tell you, I did take my tape measure on this cruise and I did measure the stateroom so that you know. And uh, we were in stateroom 3008 near the front of the ship. And the stateroom is, I think they call it a balcony, but it's kind of like that infinite veranda, infinite balcony situation on celebrity ships where it's not an outdoor balcony. It's an indoor sort of a space. Basically, it's an ocean view stateroom, but it has a wall to wall window uh, ceiling to floor and the top half of the window will retract and come down. Uh, in addition, you've got a shade that comes down in front of the window to basically black out any sun. So it's great if you like to sleep late in the morning, if you want to take a nap in the afternoon. Really very nice. We we kind of like those staterooms. And I think for Antarctica and even the Great Lakes where we were on this trip, I think it worked out fine. I I don't personally miss having a balcony. I like the fact that it's quieter because you don't have balcony doors slamming next to you and the staterooms next to you. And that's another feature of the stateroom that we really like is these staterooms were very well constructed and very quiet. So uh, you didn't have the doors, even though you can slam the doors if you work at it. Uh, if you're careful, you can almost not even hear the doors in the hallway closing. The door to the bathroom in the stateroom is also, well, let me just let you see a little bit of footage of that. And I'm just going to let the stateroom door close on its own, and you'll see how loud it is. Okay, so it makes a pretty good thunk, but to their credit, Viking has designed the door where you can close it quietly by just turning the handle holding the latch mechanism in and just let it close. You can't hear anything at all. And then just press it shut. Now that's how you should close a door when you're concerned with your neighbors. Now the bathroom door, uh, same way. Some ships have a bathroom door that when they close, they're very noisy, like on Celebrity. <laughs> they have a magnet and they thunk really loud. If you just close this one, you can hear it, but all you have to do is hold this little handle latch in, and if you get up in the middle of the night, you can almost not hear it close. Okay, so like I said, I did take my tape measure with me. I've got some notes here. I'll give you the dimensions. Uh, the stateroom was 25 and a half feet long from the front door to the edge of the window. And the stateroom at the widest point was 8 feet 8 inches wide. The bathroom was 5 feet 9 inches wide and 4 and a half feet long, which doesn't sound very big. And it was a small bathroom, but it was very well designed and very uh, usable space. So we did not personally have an issue with the size of the bathroom. Now the shower, the shower stall, glass shower enclosure, typical like you would find on the Viking Ocean ships. I measured it at 2.9 feet wide square, actually 2.9 feet by 2.9 feet. So almost three feet square. That doesn't sound very big, but it felt plenty roomy, uh, comfortable, great water pressure. Some of the best water pressure we've ever had on a cruise ship. 
And the first couple of days, we didn't have any cold water. Ricky couldn't get any. She turned it all the way cold, and it was just still too hot for her. But we told uh, Burhan, our stateroom attendant, he got it fixed. Maintenance came, fixed that. From then on, it was perfect. Temperature, no problem. Uh, love the sink. Love the vanity. Love all the cabinets. Love the drawers in the bathroom. Plenty of storage. The closet was plenty spacious. There's a lot of room in the closet for all your hanging clothes. It's kind of a strange way they designed the closet. Kind of an L-shaped closet. And there's also a warming closet for your gear if you're in Antarctica and you have parkas and boots or whatever you have that's wet. It's like a drying closet where it's heated to help dry off your clothes. I used it one day for my swimsuit and it does a great job. It warms up in there and it really dries stuff out. The closet itself, though, like I said, is kind of an L shape and we found the doors were a little hard to open. It's hard to kind of get your hands in that little grip space to open the door. On one side, you have to kind of turn your hand backward to get it to open. And I thought that design maybe could have been a little bit better. Fortunately, the closets closed pretty quietly. They weren't noisy. And of course, all the drawers inside the closet were soft clothes. Our stateroom, uh, like Viking Ocean staterooms, they do have heated floors in the bathroom. I was unable to get ours to work. Uh, but it wasn't a big deal because we're not in a cold climate anyway. But I don't know. I tried a couple of times to hit the button and the switch and adjust the temperature. I never could get the floor to heat up. Other than that, everything else in the stateroom was pretty good. Now, the, the cooler is really like a drink cooler. It's not a traditional refrigerator where if you bring something on board that you want to put in there, because it's, it's pre-made with these racks to hold like cans. Or you could even put a bottle of wine in there if you wanted to. Now, they did have a do not disturb placard on the door handle inside, but I don't know why, because they have an electronic switch inside that you can press a button and there's a light on the outside of the stateroom that lets the stateroom attendants know that you don't want to be disturbed. It basically turns red when you press DND. Uh, you can also press if you want the room made up, if you're going to be leaving to go somewhere and you want them to come in and make up the room. And then the light turns, I think, green. There is a motion sensor in the stateroom. And if you're in the room and it detects people in the room, that light becomes, I think, blue. And that lets the stateroom attendants know that you're in your room. Maybe you don't want to be bothered. They should knock before they come in. So it's really cool technology. The thermostat control takes a little getting used to because rather than being able to just up and down the temperature, uh, it has four settings. And I think, I think I remember this correctly, we were told it was 20 degrees Celsius, 22, 24, and 26. I may have that wrong, but I think that's what I remember. And those are the only four settings. There is a very small safe inside one of the closets, and ours was very hard to open the door. And I'm not sure if that's with all of the staterooms, because when we'd punch in our and it would unlock, the door would just stay closed. It didn't, it didn't pop out. There was no way to grab it to get it out. It was very difficult to get your, you had to almost get your fingernails inside that little groove to pull the door out. There wasn't like a little button on there to pull on to open the door. Um, eh, there again, that's pretty nitpicky. Uh, we have to really stretch to find things you don't like about the stateroom. So let me tell you all of the things that we really love about the stateroom on Viking Polaris. We love, love, love the nightlight. This should be on every cruise ship. There's a switch on each side of the bed. And if you press it one time, this nice little light comes on. It's this small light in the hallway down at the bottom near the floor and gives you just enough light to very easily uh, find the restroom. And when you go into the bathroom, you'll notice some floor lighting under cabinet lighting. And that gives you just enough light to where you can easily uh, navigate without tripping or falling or anything. And it doesn't wake up your, your partner. We really love the drawers and the storage in the bathroom. There was plenty of room for everything. We love the fact that they're soft closed drawers. I love the fact that they had USB-A and USB-C ports 
at the desk and on each nightstand. There's also AC outlets on each nightstand and at the desk. So if you travel with a CPAP machine, you're in luck. No matter where you choose to sleep, you're going to have power. They also have a phone charger built into each nightstand. I was unable to get it to work. Now, it could be because I have a case on my phone, and sometimes that interferes with that, that uh, wireless charging. Okay, we love the fact that they have real hangers. These are real wooden hangers. They're not the captive-style hangers. I love the bedding. Now, Ricky found the bed to be a little too hard for her. Uh, she had a hard time sleeping the first night. We told Burhan, and he brought in a topper and uh, put a little soft topper on the bed, uh, and that helped a lot. We also asked for different pillows, which they did bring. We wanted some firm pillows, and that, boy, they were firm, but they were good. I slept very well on this trip. We also like the Freya amenities that Viking has. It's their brand. They give you lotion, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and bar soap. I forgot to mention bar soap as well. Every stateroom gets complimentary binoculars, and these are very nice binoculars, very good quality. You also have the quiet Vox systems in the stateroom so that when you go on your excursions, if it requires the quiet Vox, they're right there in your stateroom. You don't have to go check them out or anything. They're there for you to use. If you've sailed on Viking Polaris or Viking Octanus and you've stayed in a similar stateroom, please put it in the comments down below. What are some things that you really liked about the stateroom? Maybe some things you did not like. Uh, overall, though, I think we were very pleased. We were very comfortable. We were in the stateroom for 12 nights. It was relatively small. It wasn't, a, it wasn't extremely roomy, especially the sitting area part was a little cramped. We spent most of our time outside of the stateroom on this cruise, but uh, it was very comfortable, very quiet, and uh, overall, we liked it. Now, another feature I should talk about is the makeup mirror and the lighted makeup mirror that's at the desk is a brilliant idea, and this is on the Viking Ocean ships as well. It's a very great concept, very nice. However, Ricky finds that when she opens it up, plenty of light, nice idea, lots of storage for all your cosmetics. She just finds it's a little low. She has to really bend over to get down to see herself in the mirror. So if they were ever going to update something or change something like that, if once you open that up, if there are a way it could be raised up or, you know, adjust the height of that lighted mirror. Any other ladies out there have had this experience where you feel like once you open it up, you have to crouch down to get your, you know, to where you can see in that lighted mirror. Let me know. Now I'm going to tell you what we thought of the food and dining on Viking Polaris. The food and dining on board Viking Polaris shares a lot in common with the larger Viking Ocean ships, but there are some important differences. The World Cafe is the ship's Lido buffet, and on the expedition ships, it plays a major part in your dining experience. Because unlike the larger ocean ships, the restaurant is considered a specialty dining venue and is only open for dinner and you have to make a reservation. World Cafe is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day with a wide variety of dishes that change every day. For breakfast, World Cafe offers a variety of fresh baked pastries and breads, eggs made to order, hash browns, corned beef hash, crispy bacon, beans, oatmeal, and a selection of dry cereals. Pancakes and waffles are also available. There's a large selection of sliced meats, cheeses, fresh fruit, and muesli. We would rate World Cafe's breakfast service to be at the very top of what you'll find on any cruise ship. During breakfast, pots of coffee are placed on the tables. However, I preferred the fresh coffee from the automated coffee machines, which are found in several venues throughout the ship. Mamsen's is also open for breakfast and offers a smaller selection of items, but we love the quieter booth seating there. Mamsen's is famous for the Norwegian waffle, which has become one of Ricky's new favorite items. 
The other option for breakfast is the complimentary room service. Viking still places a breakfast menu in your stateroom. Unlike some other cruise lines, Viking offers a very extensive room service menu for breakfast. At lunchtime, you can revisit World Cafe where you'll find a variety of hot items that change every day. On most days, you can have made-to-order Caesar salad or fresh pizza. The Caesar salad is quite good, but the pizza can go either way. I tried the pizza a few times and the slices ranged from pretty good to just average. Self-serve salads change every day and we found all of the salads to be pretty good. Once again, the breads are baked fresh each day in the bakery and they are excellent. The hot dishes on the buffet, I would say, range from good to very good, with a few standout items that come to mind. The barbecue beef ribs, lamb chops, pasta, and the veal schnitzel were all amazing, as was the butter chicken served one day. Now, some of the Indian and Asian dishes I tried were good, but they lacked the seasoning and the spiciness I prefer. I think Viking is probably trying to cater to a more moderate American palate. If you're hungry for a burger or a hot dog, you can check out The Grill, which is aft of World Cafe. Now, I've never been personally a big fan of Viking's hamburgers, but I talked with several other guests who love them. Now, the French fries are excellent, and Viking does offer onion rings, which is a huge plus in my book. Mamsen's is also open for lunch, offering a variety of Norwegian specialties. Complimentary wine, beer, and soft drinks are available with lunch and dinner in all venues on Viking ships. Now, we're not big beer drinkers, but we did find that the wines on offer were generally very good. You can also have lunch brought to your stateroom with room service. For dinner, you have a few more options. Of course, Royal Cafe offers open seating in a casual dining atmosphere. And as with lunch, you can have salads, breads, desserts, and hot dishes that change every evening. The best evening dish I had at World Cafe was the porchetta. I don't even think I've seen porchetta on other ships other than Viking cruises. As on the ocean ships, you can find fresh cocktail shrimp, crab legs, and sushi every evening on the port side aft of Royal Cafe. On the starboard side aft, the grill offers cooked-to-order steaks each evening and grilled lobster. And you can order as much as you like here. They'll serve you as many lobster tails as you can eat. The restaurant is open for dinner each evening, but reservations are required to dine here. The left side of the restaurant menu contains items that are always available and is the same each evening. The right side of the menu focuses on the daily specials. On our first visit to the restaurant, we were a little underwhelmed by the food. My crab cake starter was good, but could have used an aioli or sauce. Ricky's tiger prawn starter only had three medium-sized shrimp, and they forgot to plate the cocktail sauce. Her main course was the always available beer marinated chicken, and this was a one-quarter white meat chicken breast, and the flavor was good, but the chicken was kind of dry. Had she known or been asked by the waiter, she would have ordered dark meat rather than white meat, which is her preference. I ordered the tortellini pasta, and it was sort of disappointing. Overall, it just lacked flavor and seasoning. So our dining experience at the restaurant was not stellar, and we had not planned on returning. Later in the cruise, we were invited to a private dinner one evening, which was served from the restaurant menu. And this meal was excellent. We started with a hamachi carpaccio, which was very good, followed by a delicious bowl of cream of mushroom soup. Ricky and I both had the prime rib, which was cooked perfectly. It was tender and delicious. So I guess the restaurant can go either way. Manfredi's is Viking's Italian restaurant, and it's one of our all-time favorite cruise ship dining venues. 
We've dined at Manfredi's many times on their ocean ships, and this cruise we dined there three times, and the food was excellent each and every time. The calamari friti was served piping hot and was very good. Ricky enjoyed her caprese salad, but wished there was a bit more balsamic vinegar. Of course, you can always ask. On two of our visits, I ordered the antipasti, which was also excellent. The mushroom soup at Manfredi's is always delicious. Ricky is not as much of a meat eater as I am, so she ordered pasta on each visit. And me, I could never pass up that Bistecca Fiorentina. This is a large ribeye coated in garlic oil rubbed with porcini mushroom powder, chili flakes, kosher salt, and brown sugar. The Bistecca on Viking Polaris lives up to the standard set by the Viking ocean ships. The Bistecca Fiorentina remains one of the best steaks at sea. We rarely have any room left for dessert at Manfredi's after dinner, but we did share an order of the Nutella Panna Cotta. Now, we did not have an opportunity to try room service on this cruise, but we have had Viking room service on other ships and have always found it to be very good. And room service is complimentary. Our overall rating of the dining on Viking Polaris would range from good to very good. Most everything is well above average and some items are real standouts. One thing we would like to see improved is the bread served at Manfredi's and the restaurant is served cold. The breads are delicious, but they would be even better if they were served warm. We really like the fact that no matter what time of day, there's always some little something available to eat in the World Cafe or Mamsons, such as cookies and fruit. Also, we never had trouble finding a place to sit, and there's plenty of seating for two people. The bottom line is, if you enjoy good food, we think you're going to be very pleased with your Viking Expedition Cruise. Let me talk real quick about the itinerary. Not the most exciting itinerary, to be honest with you, and certainly underutilizes what this ship was built to do, which you can tell from the decor of the ship. The ship is designed for Antarctica. That's what this ship was made to do. All the toys they have on board, like the, the SOBs, which are the special operation boats, the two submarines on board, all of that stuff's great in Antarctica. You could see where that would really be cool. Even the Zodiacs. I mean, people were going on Zodiac rides on our cruise, but I'm thinking, well, what are you going to see? There's, it's just a little coastline. It's not, there's, there's not the wildlife on the Great Lakes like there is in Antarctica. I mean, it's just underwhelming compared. Once you've been to Antarctica, you'll know what I'm talking about. Going to the Great Lakes, it was fine. We had a good time. We really enjoyed the cruise. And we even enjoyed some of the ports, just getting off and walking around and doing some things. They were offering submarine rides that we were able to get scheduled on one. But the seas were so rough and it was so choppy that they canceled all the submarine dives because they just felt like it was a little too dangerous for people to step off the Zodiac. They could lose their balance, maybe get injured. So they just went ahead and canceled it, which was the smart thing to do. We were hoping that was kind of for us, that would have been the highlight of the trip just to be able to say we did it, to do something we've never done before to, to you know, take a submarine dive. But that's OK. Uh, Viking now is going to have to send us back to Antarctica so we can do that in Antarctica. I'm sorry, Viking. I apologize. It's uh, just the way it is. Expedition team was excellent. I don't remember how many there were, but there were a lot of people on the expedition team, all very professional. They all knew their, their stuff very well. The Zodiac drivers, the scientists on board. Uh, there's a lot of things we're not going to have time to talk about in this video. I've already gone way over my time. But you can just see where this is the ship that you want to go to Antarctica on. And if you're considering an Antarctica cruise, uh, I would highly recommend that you look into Viking, uh, Polaris, or Octantis. They're the same basic identical ships. We can just tell. We've been to Antarctica twice on two different ships, and we can just tell this is the ship you want to go on. They've got it down. They know what they're doing. Uh, I'm not saying the other ones weren't good. They were excellent. Viking has the nicest product that we've seen 
for expedition cruising. It is, uh, it's just at a completely different level. That's my review. We had a great time. I want to thank Viking for inviting us. Highly recommend Viking Expedition. Check it out. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. If you like this video, do me a favor please hit the thumbs up because that really does help our rankings with YouTube for our channel. Thanks for joining me today and I will see you on the next cruise report. And until then, smooth sailing.